I'm Kyle McSlarrell, President and CEO of the National Cable and Telecommunications Association. President Obama and the new Congress have made broadband a priority, and as the largest provider of broadband in America, our industry is totally and strongly supportive of that. Right now, Washington is totally focused on something called the stimulus package, which is a gargantuan bill with many different aspects. Uh, but partly it focused on broadband policy. So I wanted to take a few minutes just to give you our perspective on how we think the government should approach broadband policy. And not all of the, this has to be approached in the context of the stimulus, but it is clear that many of the challenges that we think about in terms of broadband policy will be addressed one way or another, it looks like, in the stimulus package. As I see it, the challenges in terms of broadband policy really fall into four buckets. One is affordability, another is adoption, a third is deployment, and the fourth I'll call uh, next-gen architecture. Uh, and I think it's important to understand what the priorities are, particularly in the context of the stimulus package, because as big as it is, and as big as the broadband uh, policy piece seems to be, these are still really scarce resources, so we should spend our money wisely, whether it's through direct grants or subsidies or tax incentives um, uh, available to providers or other uh, consumers across America. If you take the first point, affordability, it is very clear that for some segment of the population, low-income households have broadband right in front of their house but don't think that they can afford it. So one of the things we've urged Congress to do is to look at programs like the Universal Service Fund's Lifeline or Link-Up programs, uh, which historically have been devoted to phone service, and to think about those programs in, in the context of broadband. Because if you've got broadband available to you but you don't have the means to afford it, it can only help this nation's uh, productivity, uh, help uh, uh, consumers' lifestyles, uh, and open up a lot of opportunities for this household that we can get everybody connected. The second is adoption, which is it includes the affordability uh, aspect of it, but actually is a, a bigger issue. Um, because again, uh, even for those um, areas of the population that have broadband available to them, it's interesting to note that, that uh, survey uh, data is pretty consistent that somewhere around 20% of American households don't even have a computer in the house. So whether or not they have broadband at the curb is kind of irrelevant. So again, if you want to move the needle in terms of adoption, the government can actually have a huge impact for a relatively small number. It's still probably billions of dollars ultimately, but compared to the rest of the package, you could really move the needle by, by directly subsidizing the acquisition of uh, netbooks or other devices to ensure internet connectivity. The third issue is deployment, and here I think there is some confusion uh, because uh, some segment of the population, 8 to 10 percent um, or so, uh, lives in, in an area that's truly unserved. There isn't a broadband provider in front of them. And I should note the cable industry um, uh, provides broadband uh, and makes it available to 92 percent of American households. They don't all take it. I wish they did. But it's there. It's in front of their house. So there is some percentage part of the population um, that hasn't received the benefits of broadband deployment. So how do you get broadband there? Clearly, some provider or multiple providers have made the decision that those areas are not economic. Whether they're right or wrong, they're not providing that service there. So that's in a totally appropriate place for the government, whether it's in partnership with providers uh, and whatever the means, uh, to, to incent uh, providers to build out in those areas. And if you're talking about scarce resources, it strikes us that that ought to be the priority. Um, and it's pro probable that most of the monies that people are talking about in the context of the broadband package, the stimulus package, would be needed just to solve that problem. The last issue is not unimportant, but I don't think it rises quite to the challenge of, un of, of addressing the digital divide in unserved America. And that is the question um, for those of us who are in the broadband business or someone like me, just you know, the average consumer who uses these services, we all want faster speeds. So the question is, what's the appropriate role for providing incentives for next generation architecture? Our industry is beginning um, deployment of next generation architecture with, with uh, technologies that theoretically at least would allow uh, download speeds of 160 megs and upload speeds of up to 120. And at least in trials, 
um, over the last six months have begun that technology deployment with speeds of 50 megs um, downstream. Other providers, whether it's fiber, fiber to the home uh, architecture or other technologies, um, particularly with fourth generation wireless, uh, are going to be bringing different levels of speeds and different services. There are lots of plans, but most of them are probably three to five years off. So one question is, how appropriate is it to incent the acceleration of those? I think it's important for the government to play a role in that, and we have encouraged um, you know, stretch goals so that if you're going to provide incentives, that it be for something meaningful and attainable, attainable and people have different numbers. We've said this, this should be something like 50 megs downstream, but the point is, let's solve the achievable problems first. Let's go try to move the needle in terms of addressing the needs of low-income Americans on the affordability issue, adoption issues, issues for those families uh, that don't have computers, and the deployment issues for unserved America.